What's going on guys? It's one a little here and today I'm gonna show you a tutorial of the WS6 puck as many people have been calling it. So I'm gonna shoot I'm gonna do a quick rundown of the menu just to show any of you guys who want to know how to use it without reading the manual. Let's dive in. So first of all, I'm talking about the WS6 master setup. This is what I got. I got it with the 11 inch FMF coil and you get these headphones with it. There's some other smaller accessories, but this is the most significant you get. So you get the WS6 headphones with the puck and the coil, and then you get um, the shaft that, from the ORX. And this shaft, it's a lot lighter. Um, well, it's not a lot lighter, but you can significantly feel it in the field versus the beefier shaft I've used the beefier shaft and it's a little bit heavier but the 11 inch coil is a little bit nose heavy but that's just because it's the 11 inch coil i wish they would come out with an elliptical coil i hope they do but that's something for the future right now let's talk about the ws6 master okay so here is the puck right here and we're gonna slide it off the headphones and so basically you just slide it off like that and you can see where it connects here so let's put this off to the side. Okay, so here's the puck. It's very, very, very light. So right here, you've got a charging port and you get the, um, it's like a, like a larger micro USB, I guess, but you get um, one plug with three of those on it. So you can charge this, your coil, and your pin pointer at the same time, which is pretty nice. And so you, to close that it's a little bit tough to snap it on but it it won't break on you so the buttons right here we've got the power button and this is also the minus button so you decrease values and this is the plus button which you can increase values and when you're in the main menu these buttons the plus and minus buttons will help you cycle through your menu this button is the settings button. You can change gen general settings. You can change your contrast. You can change your volume, things like that. And then this is the menu button. And this is this is the the meat. On, this is the meat right here. This is the good part. So powering on is very simple. You're just gonna press the minus button, and it'll go through this little menu thing. So XP metal detectors. And it shows your version right there. So it, this little bit is software updatable and it just connected to my coil and it's an automatic connection right out of the box. You turn this puppy on and it'll connect to your coil. There's no entering in a value that needs to be done unless you buy another coil. So right now we'll scroll through the program. So, so general is the first pro is your stock program. This is what you'll turn on to and so to cycle through the programs, once you're in this menu, you just hit the plus buttons and we're going through sensitive, sensitive full tones, fast, park. And this little icon right here means I've saved a custom program, but we'll go into that later. Deep high conductor, deus mono. And deus mono is interesting because it's basically the XP deus. So it runs on a single frequency, but it's it's a lot better. It's a lot more amped up because it's better in EMI and it has like a major depth enhancement. It's crazy. So Goldfield, Relic, which is the, probably the deepest program on here. Diving, Beach, Beach Sensitive, and we're back to General. So now we'll go through the settings. So to scroll through the settings, use this button here. So we have our volume, so we can increase by using the plus and minus buttons or decrease. And see this little icon right here? What you have to do is you have to hold settings button again to that. And this just changes, I don't even know what that changes. Must change like the pitch, I guess, of the volume. But to exit this, to exit any of the expert menus, you hit that button because it corresponds with that arrow. So now let's hit the settings button again. Go to audio type, you have PWM right now, but just hitting plus, you can change it to square. And the difference is PWM is like what was on the old dais and square is like what's on the Equinox. 
right. <clears throat> Settings. So you press and hold the gear button and this changes your language. So I just changed my language by accident. Keep hitting that. Contrast. Go train. I don't even know what the, it's an app, I guess, but I had not seen anything on it. Uh, frequency scan, you can do a manual frequency scan if you want, or a different one, which we will show you. And you can update infos language. All right, so now let's exit that. All right, program. This is where you'll save a program. So if, what you would do is you would um, create a program in one of the set user one, one of the set user programs, you create your own custom settings, and then you'd scroll the program, and you'd press and hold this gear button, and save, and there we go. So it's as simple as that to save a program on this WS6 puck. Now the next one we got pairing, and this is where you would pair. Um, your pin pointer, so this is your MI6, your coil, or your headphones. And I think you just press and hold here. And for the MI6, so I have the MI6. I'm not gonna do a demonstration on it now because it died, but it you just hold it. There. So you just switch on while holding down the MI6 for eight seconds and pair. But that's, you know, for the, um, let's go back to that. So that's your, so pairing. So I would, if I wanted to do that, I could scroll down and enter in a new code for the new serial number for a new coil. So that's what you'd have to do. If you bought a new coil, you would have to enter the serial number for it to be recognized. So that it concludes for the settings. Now let's go to the menu. So we have discrim, so this changes how far up you discriminate out, so what numbers. So if you go up to 15, you're gonna discriminate everything uh, through 15, negative 6.4 to 15. So I can turn my discrimination all the way down. So that is wide open, there's no discrimination. But I'm gonna turn it back up, just because that's where I like it. All right, so we see right here, this other little arrow, that's an that's the expert menu. We're not gonna get into that right now. We will in this video, but I'm gonna cycle through the basic menu settings first. Okay, so after disc, we've got sensitivity, very straightforward, increases it, increases the depth, decrease it, decreases the depth, but decreases the uh, sensitivity to electromagnetic interference. Frequency shift, I just do a, a automatic scan, and this is what I was talking about. There is, you can just do this, and you just hold down, and it scans for you, so. And there, it just, it chose channel one. Iron volume, this is the volume of your iron targets. I like to keep mine down because it gets very annoying hearing the buzzing. You can turn it off if you want to zero. Some people like hearing it, depending on what your preference is. If you want it higher up, you can do that. If you want it off, you can do that. If you want it very low, you can do that. So there's a lot of flexibility with that there. Right. So reactivity. Reactivity is your recovery speed, and it changes the speed at which a machine, your detector, resets after hitting a target. So say you have a nail, and you're swinging. It sees the nail. As soon as it comes off the nail, it has to reset so we can hear a target next to it. So if a nail and a coin comes across the nail, some detectors will just come across it and they can't reset fast enough and they won't see the coin. You can really up this. This is super fast. Reactivity 5, even with an 11-inch coil, it's insanely fast. And it, through machine gun iron, it's constantly resetting. It is super, super fast. Now, if you're in an open field, turn this baby down all the way to zero. I've never seen that. I've seen as low as one. This is zero and you go super deep. And if you're in the relic program, if you've done some tweaks, if you kind of know this and you've gotten the hang of it, put it in deep high conductor relic program 
tweak a few things, put it in zero, and man, you have a very, very deep machine. So reactivity is very important on this detector. So next we have audio response, and audio response increases the volume of deep signals. It does not increase your depth. A lot of people think it increases your depth, but actually what it does is if you have a very, very faint target, it increases the volume of that. So you can hear it a lot better, and very deep pairs will sound like they're on the surface. But if your detection range only goes to 11 inches and you have an 11 inch coin there, and it's very quiet, you increase it, you can hear it. But if you have one that's like 11 and a half inches, you're just not going to hear it. It does not make your machine deeper. It's not like TX Power, which was on the dais. It was kind of like a, a depth increase. But this will just, if you're kind of hard of hearing, you can increase that and you will hear deeper targets better. You decrease it, you're not going to hear deep targets as good, but you will get more of a tonal nuance, which beginners, if you don't know what that is, it's basically... Uh, you can, there's information you can collect from the tones. You can hear if something's round. You can hear if something is very deep. So having a lower audio response, it enables you to tell more information about your target from the tones. So I like to keep mine at low for that reason. So next is ground balance or grab. And all you do to that is you hold this button down and you pump the coil. So obviously I have my coil connected now, but it's over metal and it just messed the whole thing up. So all you would do is hold this button down and pump the coil. So that's grab. Ground stability. Um, I think this is, I'm not entirely sure what this is, but I'm pretty sure it's if your detector is like, um, if it's very very reactive in highly mineralized environments, I think this helps it a little bit. So you can turn it up, but I think you lose sensitivity on lower conductors. So I'm not entirely sure about that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And now we're back to discrim. So we're gonna go into the expert menu by holding this button down. All right, so now we're in the expert menu. So we have tones, so you can go three tones, so you can go, let's go down. You can go as little as two tones, three tones, four tones, five tones, pitch, or full tones. Full tones is my favorite. It's like the Equinox. If you put this in square, like we I showed you earlier, it'll sound a lot like the Equinox. Pitch is just one tone for the non-ferrous. So it's good in iron hunting, so you can just pick out a non-ferrous sound. You're not necessarily looking for a higher low conductor, You'll just hear the sound, but it's very good in iron. Five tones is like the Equinox with the five tones. It's the same concept, same idea. Four tones, it just has the and it just has three tone breaks. So basically just four distinct tones. So it has an iron tone. It has a like a low mid, a mid high, and a high. And then three tones is simple, low, middle, and high. And two tones is kind of like pitch, except the the high tone does not modulate or does not um, increase in pitch based on the amplitude of the target. It means it does not get higher if you're closer to it. It just stays the same like a normal tone would. So now we'll hit this button again to scroll through the expert menu. Bottle caps, this is like iron, um, iron bias. So FE on the Equinox or F2 and you just increase it. it rejects bottle caps but you can also lose stuff in iron because it basically knocks out anything that sounds masked or sounds like it has iron in it but that can also be masked targets so now we're in notch and basically what you would do is you would go like that and then you can increase your notch and then you would yeah, and then you hold that button down to go on the other side. So that's how you use notch. So silencer, this is also like F2, and it basic, it's basically like bottle caps. Bottle caps is more specialized. This one is more general. And silencer, you just increase it, and it, like for mat stuff that sounds like it's falsing, it eliminates that, but you can also lose mask targets because of increasing it. So you have to be careful. I wouldn't use this in like colonial iron or anything, but you can use it in modern trash. 
Use it on the beach is very good to reject bottle caps. That's my favorite place to use it. And now we're back to tones. Now it looks like we have another expert menu and I don't exactly know what that is yet. Let's find out together. Oh, okay. So this beginners, if you're watching this, do not have to worry about this or anybody who seems confused by what this is. This just increases the pitch of your tones. So it's very simple actually. So let's, so we're in two tones right now. So we're in tone one, 202 Hertz. That's just how you read that. That's the pitch of it. It's very low. It's like an iron pitch. So we go to this one, the tone break. This is where the tone breaks. So basically, um, the tone breaks at 6.8. So that just means everything above 6.8 is not iron. So actually, let me correct myself. No, never mind. I'm right. So this is the, the pitch the high tone and two tones so there's a remember there's an iron tone and a high tone if you wanted to increase this to make it sound a lot higher because targets like this pitch is kind of low and i like to increase mine all the way up if this is something you want to do all the way to the top so i can pick out very high sounding tones very easily because sometimes it just doesn't always jump out at you but that's what you can use that for sorry if that was a little confusing but i don't, i never knew what that menu was so um yep all right so that looks like that looks like the entire menu covered also if you wanted to have larger vdis something you can do is press these buttons at the same time wait Yep, there we go. You had to hold them down. And now you have large VDIs. Now you can still access your menu, which is kind of cool. I didn't think you could do that, but now you have large VDIs, which is good if you're kind of, um, if you can't see it. And basically to exit that, you press these two buttons, the plus and the menu button at the same time. And then you go back into your regular VDIs. So, and then to power off, the you just do a quick press of the minus than the plus. So like, boom, boom, ready? And that concludes the menu rundown of the WS6 Puck. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it helps some of you guys who wanted to learn more about how to use this, helped you guys out. I will have some testing videos in the spring. It's, we're snowed in right now, but I'm gonna try to keep you guys updated with something. I know you guys, I've deprived you guys of content for a long time, but I'm glad I'm getting back into it. So thank you all for watching and happy hunting.